Hi, this is John Dark Arps, and you're watching Anatomy of a Track, a new tutorial series where I give you a transparent look into the production of one of my tunes. This video comes bundled with lots of extra content such as audio and MIDI stems, synthesizer patches, and other samples I've used in the track when you buy the release from the darkarps.com or eastvandigital.com shops. You can then remix, resample, or reuse this content in your own productions. This track is called Everybody and is coming out on East Bend Digital in January 2015. Thanks for listening. So I thought that we would start by looking at the drums. There's not really that much to say about them, really. I'm using a battery kit. I've been enjoying battery a lot recently, so I found this kit called Dusty Ganja. And so, you know, it's got some nice selection of kick drum sounds that I liked. Just kind of a bit drum and bassy, garagey. Also, a nice selection of non-percussive, bassy drops, hits, stuff like that, which I thought, yeah, there's, these are probably going to be really useful to me. So basically, you know, I just kind of did my usual thing where I program patterns and out of it a swing. The kick drum here is basically one particular kick sample I liked with a few accents every now and again, little fills with a different uh, sound. So, you know, it just gives it a bit of a flavor, a bit of a sh shuffliness. I think I added about 50% swing in the piano roll editor when I programmed the kicks. So that's something I quite like to do with a lot of my um, drum programming is just use the, use the various different kick drums that uh, you're getting in your patch just to add a little bit of extra flavor. Something that I think is really important when you're using battery or any kind of um, sample playback for drums is keeping a, a solid control over your envelopes, over your volume envelopes. So click on column one, hold command, click on column two. I've selected all these kick sounds. You know, you can just very quickly turn on the volume envelope for all of those just by clicking on the little power indicator here. Now all the volume envelopes for those cells are on. And I always like to have a very short release so that I can control the length of the sample just by how long the note is in the arrangement. So that way I always have a very precise control over how long the kick drum sound is. Because it does make a difference when you take into consideration its interplay with the other elements in the low frequency register like the bass. Over here in the key track stack are patterns that we don't hear but Logic does. They're for compressors and noise gates um, and other plugins which allow a side-chained input and we'll be using them a little bit later. Typically I have patterns that mimic the kick and snare but there may be other patterns from other elements in the track too. Because of the nature of house and techno music, much of the sounds in the mix will be pumping against the four to the floor and so that's what I use these tracks for. I'll just solo the drums and kick buses and we'll have a listen to the drums on their own from here. So in addition to the different channels, as you can see, kick, hat, shaker, snare, um, other sounds coming in later on in the arrangement, I also have just a couple of loops from that are playing in Ableton Live. I just prefer the simplicity of throwing a loop into Ableton and then chopping it up to MIDI, which is what I've done with this particular break. And then this other one just comes in to add a little bit of extra groove to the, to the beats. And often that little extra break can make all the difference. Um, I'll just mute them. You're really missing a lot without those sampled breaks and they just kind of make the whole beat coherent. <laughs> 